Okay, now in our previous tutorial you went through and you set up your animation uh, clips which are tethered to the bird. So our bird is now set up with the animation to die, flap and present its idle form, which you can see it doing here. What we want to do now is establish some parameters by which we can control the bird. So what we want to do is uh, set this animation up so that we can trigger the bird during gameplay to either remain idle or to flap or die. For example, if it hits an obstacle, we want it to die. Uh, if we trigger the game to uh, rise, so if we want it to jump up, we'd like that to be the moment for flap to be enacted. So we're going to set that up right now. To do that, we're going to go to Window, go through the drop-down, and select Animator, as distinct from Animation, which you used previously to set up the clips. We now have those clips, we actually need to set parameters on them. So go to Animator and select that. It's going to bring up a window for you. And we're editing the, um, the bird clip which if you click here we should have bird selected so you can see bird is here we have the animations all set up and ready to go down here and in your animator window you'll see uh, the clips for idle flap and you can move these around by left clicking and dragging and die which we set up we also have entry which is an automatic state within the game entry simply means once gameplay begins we're going to transition to, and we set this one up, idle. So as soon as gameplay begins, we're automatically transitioning. This line here with an arrow means a transition, and we're going towards idle. So that's where it goes instantly. At the moment, as no other transitions have been established, the game will simply remain with the idle clip, and no further action will take place. So what we're going to do now is ensure that we have some control over this game. To do that, we're going to use parameters. Up here in the left hand side of your animator window is the parameters, so click on that and we're going to add some. A parameter is simply something that uh, controls the game. So we're going to go down and use a trigger because what we want is to have these parameters enacted only when they're triggered by the controller of the game, which is going to be you. So select one trigger parameter and we're going to name this capital F LAP flap. The spelling is important since we refer to the parameters through code and that's how we control the game. So do make, uh, do make sure that you spell these correctly. We're going to put a second parameter in, click plus, another trigger and this trigger is called capital D die. Excellent, so now we have two parameters set up which refer to flap and die. We don't need to set idle for the simple reason that it's our entry state anyway, which is why it's highlighted in gold. So you can see that it is our automatic set. What we'll set up first is a transition from idle to die. So let's get our bird ready to die. <laughs> to do so, right click on idle and select make transition. This will give you control of a transition arrow. You can tell which direction it's moving because there is a little arrow on it pointing the way. So we're going to go down to die and it will snap into place left click to drop it in place and that transition has been established. To edit this transition we're going to click on the arrow in the center and this will bring up in Inspector our transition controls. Automatically the transition is set to has exit time which means that the clip will play for its full length of time which is one second since we put a single keyframe in and then it will return to the entry point we don't want this because we don't want our bird to die and then instantly go back to idle. We actually want it to remain dead until the next round is started. So we're going to take that off. So unclick has exit time. And we've now got an issue because it needs at least one condition to be valid. So let's give it a condition plus the condition. Flap, that doesn't sound right. We're going to die. So use the drop down box and select the correct condition. So we've now set up a transition from idle to die. Let's do the same thing for flap. Right click idle, make a transition, drag that transition arrow down to flap and left click to drop it in place. Edit it by clicking on the arrow in the center 
and we're going to get rid of the exit time on that transition and give it our own condition. This time it snapped into exactly what you wanted. You can check the drop down if you're worried, but flap is what we want. So we can now transition to flap when triggered. However, we need to go back to idle as well because we don't want it to remain with its little wing up. So right click on flap, make a third transition, drag that transition back to idle and use your targeting here, select that arrow. Make sure you don't accidentally select the original one. You want to get the arrow which is going from flap back to idle. And this one, we're going to have a look at it. This is all looking great. Has exit time. We do want an exit time on this because we want the flap to complete its circuit and then go back to idle. So this is all as it should be. What we've now done is set up our animator to trigger a number of transitions within gameplay when our established parameters are referenced in code. The only thing left to do of course is to set that code up. So save your work, file, save the scene, save the project, save everything, save yourself, and move on to the next tutorial.